Is this a stand-up fight, sir? Or is this a bug hunt? No, it's slivers. So we're going to jump into this deck. Um, this is my slivers deck. You know, it's got to be one of the most popular tribes in uh, Magic the Gathering's history. Um, slivers, you figure, the, the, you know, you'll see in a second if you've never played a Civ Sliver deck, kind of how it all works and kind of what you can do with this kind of deck. Now, this is like the basic Sliver build that gives you, I crunched in as many Slivers as I could. Um, I did remove some of the crappy ones. There's some ones that aren't so good, but then I put in all the good stuff. And, of course, all the land base and everything else that goes with this deck. So, guys, um, without further any uh, further ado, we're just going to, like, jump into this. Now, the commander for Slivers is going to be Morphon the Boundless. Now, I'm going to tell you why I chose him. Um, first off, he's got Changeling, so he is a Sliver. Uh, it says, this card is every creature type. So, automatically, he is a Sliver. He's colorless for seven. Um, when he enters a battlefield, I choose a creature type, obviously Slivers. And now spells of the chosen type you cost, ca cast cost Wooberg. Um, basically, that's white, blue, black, red, green, less to cast. So those five colors um, cheaper on whatever sliver you're trying to cast. Uh, this effect reduces only the mana, only the amount of colored mana you play. Now, other creatures you control the chosen type get plus one, plus one. So, he's got a bunch of stuff going on here. All right, let's kind of dive into this real quick. We're playing Slivers. Um, this, if you can, um, once you get him out, any Slivers that use those colors, which they all do, will fundamentally play for free unless there's, um, you know, a colorless uh, casting cost attached to it. So, um, you'll see in a minute how amazingly broken this is. If you can get this guy out, um, you're going to just start plopping sit livers into play without doing really much with your mana. But there is a lot of mana generation in here, so you should be able to try to, even if you can't get them out, you know, there's other ways to get the slivers out. So let's go ahead and jump into the other 99 and see what we got to got to go. And check it out. I brought my, um, my Xenomorph friends here to hang out with the slivers. Um, <laughs> You know, you, just to comment a little bit here, while well, before I go all into these cards, uh, I want you to think about a second, um, how influential were the Aliens movies to, like, video games and just culture in general? I mean, just think about it. Um, StarCraft, uh, Halo, um, was it Starship Troopers, um, Chronicles of Riddick, probably so, all these kinds of movies, they started because of Alien and Aliens and those movies, and it really gave space that more realistic, kind of gritty feel. You know, movies like that, and maybe like um, Blade Runner, for example, where those are like more of a realistic how it could be future, as opposed to like maybe Star Trek, you know. Uh, but you can kind of see you know, how good that, how influential, uh, Ridley Scott, the director was on like so much, so much stuff from culture. All right, guys, I will get off my little soapbox there about science fiction and we will jump into some slivers. So first one we got is leeching sliver. Whenever a sliver you control attacks, defending player loses one life. So whenever you attack, you know, whoever you're attacking is going to lose a life. Next one we got is Shifting sliver. Slivers cannot be blocked except by sliver. So it makes all your slivers basically unblockable unless there's another player at the table that's playing slivers. Not that common. I mean, it might happen, but it's pretty rare. I know I've never had another person at a table playing slivers. Uh, you know, I've had other tribes like elves and whatever, zombies, but never slivers. Um, diffusion sliver. Whenever a sliver creature you control becomes the target of a spell or an ability, uh, an opponent controls, counter that spell or ability unless its controller plays, pays two. So this gives your um, slivers almost like, isn't this something called Ward? I think in um, Strixhaven they came out with a thing called Ward. And it kind of reminds me of that. So if they want to do something to it, they got to pay two first before they can get it off the field. It's pretty useful. This little guy, um, all slivers have when this permanent comes into play, you may fate seal one. Um, Fate Seal isn't a very used mechanic. Um, you'll see it on Jace the Mind Sculptor. I think his plus one does this. Uh, or his, I think plus one, but whatever. His first ability. Um, basically, you look at the top of someone's library. If it's a, you get to see the card, if you don't like that card, uh, you can just put it on the bottom of their library. It's kind of almost like the opposite of a uh, scrying. But you're doing it on your... It's the same thing as scrying, but you're doing it to your opponents. So you get to choose the worst thing for them, so to speak. So Fate Seal is kind of neat. 
Uh, next we got is Dragscape Sliver. Uh, each sliver creature in your graveyard is, has Unearth 2. Uh, you pay the Unearth cost, return this card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste, exile it at the beginning of the next end step, uh, or if it would leave the battlefield, Unearth only a sorcery. Uh, next one we're going to do is uh, Harmonic Sliver. All slivers have, when this creature comes into play, destroy target artifact or enchantment. So if you got this guy out, more slivers come into play. All Everyone's like soul rings and, you know, mana rocks get blown up. Or you can blow up some really annoying, you know, beneficial enchantments for your, for your opponents. Uh, next we're going to go ahead and take a look at this guy. Each sliver gains pay two, sacrifice this creature, gain four life. I mean, if you need the life gain, you're really down low somehow... It is kind of a little bit of a, a way out. It's only two mana, so I figured I'd throw them in there. Next we got is Gem Hod. You have to have the sliver in here. It turns all your slivers basically into, well, you know, birds of paradise. So you basically turn, use this guy and then all sliver. He, he himself can tap for mana and then all the other ones as well. Next we got is this little guy. Um, not really that impressive, but he's cheap. So I threw him in because he's cheap. Uh, all slivers gain first strike. Uh, then we've got Crystalline Sliver. Uh, it gives your sh slivers Shroud. So this keeps it from people targeting them and removing them um, or doing things to your sliver. So really cool card. Uh, next we got Cloud Shredder. Uh, sliver creatures you control have Flying in Haste. And this guy is going to be Gale Rider Sliver. All slivers you control have Flying. So you can fly over top of um, some Ground Pounders. Uh, next, we got Might Sliver. All Slivers get plus two, plus two. Very useful. Uh, and then, of course, we've got Horned Sliver. All Slivers gain Trample. We got this guy. Fury Sliver. All Sliver creatures have Double Strike. Uh, double Strike's really cool because it'll hit in twice, and that, you know, that really will cause some damage real fast. Toxin Sliver. Whenever a Sliver deals combat damage to a creature, destroy that creature. It can't be regenerated. Um, that would basically be Death Touch. It gives them all Death Touch. In the old days, they didn't have words for some of this stuff. Like, this right here would be Haste, but they didn't have a word for Haste. So, all creature, all Slivers are unaffected by Summoning Sickness, but basically Haste. Uh, then we got this one. A virulent sil Sliver. It gives them all Poisonous 1. It basically is... Um, when a sliver attacks somebody, they get a poison counter. Uh, if you see my video with the commander that has some of the poisonous stuff in there, like some of the creatures and a couple artifacts, um, the when you when a player gets ten poison counters, they die. I mean, it's even better than commander damage. Commander commander damage is twenty one damage. Poison is just ten, and then they're dead. Um, all right, next one we got is fungus sliver. All sliver creatures you have. Whenever this creature is dealt damage, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Uh, next, we got Spinneret Sliver. All slivers have this creature can block as though it had flying. So basically, gives you all your slivers reach. You know, if you don't have the sliver that gives them flying, well, that'll give them reach so they can block flyers. Ghost Flame. Uh, slivers are colorless, uh, which is kind of cool because, you know, if there's anything that targets or, you know, removal for a specific color or is pro against a color, color... Now your slivers are colorless, so if there's somebody who's got protection against a specific color, then no longer uh, would they have that ability because all of them are colorless. Next we got is Brood Sliver. Whenever a sliver deals combat damage to a player, its controller may put a 1-1 one, one colorless sliver creature token into the battlefield. So, so useful. because You're just going to stack up slivers with something like this. You want to get in as many hits on, with the slivers as you can. Next we got Thorncaster Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have whenever this creature attacks, it deals one damage to target creature or player. Uh, next we got is Synapse. Synapse Sliver. Whenever a Sliver creature deals combat damage to a player, its controller may draw a card. So there's your card draw on the Sliver. So if you attack them with Slivers, you could draw up your whole, like, four, five, six cards if you're attacking them with all your Slivers. Um, uh, look at this. It's kind of neat if you read the... Um, the flavor text, it says, Species XR17 feeds upon the mental energies of its victims. This explains why the goblins remain unaffected, because they don't have brains. Um, okay, so, you, and here's a good example of kind of where they're almost like kind of referencing, you know, a little bit of Aliens um, and the Alien series movies with some of this stuff, because if you remember in those movies, they had different species designations. I, I don't remember these ones, but... 
Um, you know, the best I would say is that uh, a lot of things inspired this kind of thing. And I think that Slivers was inspired by Aliens, um, the movie Aliens and the Ridley Scott films and such. Uh, now, Battering Sliver, uh, all slivers have tramples. I have two different slivers that give trample, so that's kind of useful. Uh, we got another one here, uh, Acidic Sliver. Uh, each sliver gains pay two, sacrifices creature. This creature deals two damage to target creature or player. Maybe you want to do an instant win. You can pay some mana and just blow them all up, you know, or blow up a player and just knock them out of the game. Uh, spine Sliver. If any sliver is blocked, it gets plus one, plus one until end of turn for each creature blocking it. So, has it has its uses. Next, we got all slivers have pay three, sacrifice is permanent, destroy target permanent. You can use it to blow up stuff. Uh, next, we got megantic sliver. Sliver creatures you control get plus three, plus three, plus three, plus three. Makes them really huge. You know, very useful. Makes them really giant. Trample them. Once you put trample on them, you can start wrecking, wrecking everyone's day. Uh, Venom Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have Death Touch. Uh, next we got is Bone Scythe Sliver. All sli Sliver creatures you control have Double Strike. Again, Double Strike is very useful. You know, it hits twice. Uh, next we got is Siphon Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have Life Link. So you want to gain some life, you put this guy out, you attack with Slivers, and then your life total goes up. Very useful. Um, next guy is Belligerent Sliver. Slivers Creatures you control have this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Very useful. Uh, Mana Weft, it's another um, sliver like Gem Hide. It's basically the same as Gem Hide, but there's two of them in here for obvious reasons. Get this guy out, and then of course tap your slivers for mana to get out more slivers quicker. Uh, next one we got is going to be Quick Sliver. Any player may play sliver cards as though they had flash. Um, again, at a table like this... If you're another sliver player, sure, but I don't see this being a problem. You know, <laughs> you're probably the only person that's going to have slivers that can play by play at flash speed. Uh, pulmonic sliver, all slivers have flying, and if this creature would be put into a graveyard, you may put it on top of its owner's library instead. So super useful. If sliver dies, it's on your library, you go get it back, or and all kinds of good stuff. Uh, next we got two-headed. Two-headed sliver, all slivers have... This creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Very similar to the other one. You'll notice that some of these have certain uh, similarities. Um, you know, it's, it's two different slivers. Um, but in Magic, you know, you can make two cards do the same thing. Just the casting cost of one is different than the other. One of these is a 1-1, one, one, the other one's a 2-2. Two, two. So, you know, basically the same idea, just uh, two different slivers. Uh, reflex sliver, all slivers have haste. Uh, next, we're going to do Muscle Sliver. They get plus one, plus one. It gets a cheap guy. I figured I want to get some cheapies out first and start building on the, some of those. Uh, then we got this one, Constricting Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have when this creature enters the battlefield, you may exile target creature and opponent controls until this creature leaves the battlefield. Super useful. If you can get this out and then pop out some slivers or generate some slivers with some of the other cards, you're definitely going to be doing yourself a huge favor right there. Uh, next up, we got Mnemonic Sliver. Uh, the game pay two, sacrifice this creature, and draw a card. If you really need the card draw, there is there is a way to do that. Wing Sliver, they get flying. You know, again, you want to have more of these to do flying, because uh, that will definitely help, help in a game. Spiteful Sliver. Sliver creatures you control have, whenever this creature is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player or planeswalker. Very, very super useful. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and jump into some of the heavy hitters. Now, this is the this is the the ultimate five. So this group here, um, you definitely if you can get them all and put them in this deck, you're going to see. Now, remember that Morphon Morphon allows you to get Wooberg for free. Okay, so I can play Sliver Hive Lord for free. It doesn't. I don't have to pay any money for it if um, my commander's out. So. These five cards will play for free if you have your commander out. It's because it, obviously it's white, blue, black, red, and green. So let's go look at the commander real quick. Um, so we can just do a quick review. Uh, look what the commander does. Again, spells of the chosen type. You cast, cost that much less to cast. Okay, and then there it is. So there's your casting cost. So it plays for free. 
Sliver creatures control have indestructible. And it's a 5-5, five, five, which is... Just, <laughs> that's probably a win on its own, if you can get that out. Uh, next card is going to be the first sliver. It has Cascade. Okay, it has Cascade. When you cast a spell, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card that costs less. You may cast it without paying its mana cost. Put the exile card on the bottom of your library in a random order. Sliver spells have cascades. Whenever you cast a sliver, like this guy will cast for zero. Okay. Uh, he's got cascade. So then you <laughs> will just keep playing and playing and playing slivers. It'll just, they'll just, just be a giant horde of slivers until you run out of cascade, I guess. Um, all right. Next, we're going to say sliver legion. Uh, it gives them plus one, plus one for each other sliver in play. So if you have five slivers while well, they're plus five plus five so that's pretty amazing and this counts as a sliver obviously so that would uh, be an eight eight in that case all right next we got the legendary the reserve list sliver queen i only have two sliver queens one has been graded and i'm just keeping it in its little grade shell and this one is in my deck so sliver queen counts as a sliver now you pay two, you put a sliver token into play, treat this as a 1-1 one, one colorless creature. And of course, <laughs> here's our little sliver token right there. Yep, it actually looks like a, looks like a person. Looks like kind of like, um, I don't know, like an alien from uh, Mass Effect or something as opposed to like some of these creature-y slivers. The slivers look a lot like Xenomorphs, but this guy looks like he's from Mass Effect or something. All right, next we got Sliver Overlord. Uh, you pay three, search your library for a sliver card, reveal that card, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Again, he plays for free. Overlord, Queen, all of them, they play for free, as long as you have your commander out. Uh, you pay three, you gain control of target sliver. But uh, you can see where that's going. Very, very super useful. All right, let's go ahead and now, in this deck, if you want to make your slivers completely unblockable, uh, you can give them horsemanship. <laughs> you know, I don't imagine there's a lot of players that... Again, this is something that people know about, but in general, you don't see it played very often. It's starting to become more popular now that people have figured out there's such a thing as horsemanship. Basically, any creature with horsemanship can only be blocked by another creature with horsemanship. So, high probability, at least one or two people at the table don't have anything to block your slivers if you play this. So, super useful in a deck like this to just mow over somebody and just... just, just wipe their entire life total out now we're gonna get into some of the instance enchantment sorcery is a whole deal now uh, this sorcery choose a creature type draw a card for each permanent you control of that type so obviously you're going to choose slivers and then you draw a card for each sliver so very helpful for card draw next we got is uh alfetto dredging return up the three creature cards of the creature type of your choice from your graveyard to your hand so if your slivers get board wiped uh you play this you can go get some of them back and put them out you know get them back out again start getting them back out now we got our enchantments um first one's gonna be burgeoning it only calls one it's this is i think this might be a reserve list card it may or may not be. I'm not sure. I think it might be City of Solitude that might be. I think this one's not reserve list. But um, whenever an opponent plays a land, you may choose a land card from your hand and put it into play. So a quick way to start getting those um, five-color mana lands and a whole bunch of other stuff into play. Super useful. Uh, next we got is Wild Pair. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield, if you cast it from your hand, you may search your library for a creature card with the same total power and toughness. Put it onto the battlefield and shuffle your library. A lot of those slivers do have some of the same power and toughness, so it's a good way to start grabbing out some more slivers from your from your library. Mana Echoes. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield, you may add a, an amount of colorless mana equal to the number of creatures you control that share a creature type with it. So the, again, they're all slivers, so you'll add a lot of extra colorless um, as you're casting slivers if your encha this enchantment's in play. Training Grounds. Now, Training Grounds in this deck really shines, uh, especially those ones that have uh, activated abilities on them that cost something. Uh, it lowers the cost of those activated abilities by two. Okay, um, so that's super helpful. Like, example, um, let's take a look at, let's just say, the Queen. Let's do the Lord and the Queen. So on Sliver Queen, uh, you pay two. It'll go down to one, so it'll make that cheaper uh, to put a 1-1 one -one token into play. And on the Overlord, 
you can pay one to search your library for a sliver card. Uh, so you're tutoring for one, and of course, that's just amazingly useful, especially with training rounds and play. And there are a lot of other cards in there that had activated abilities, so this had to go in. Uh, next one's going to be Mirari's Wake. Uh, they get plus one, plus one. And of course, whenever you tap a land for mana, you add one mana to your mana pool of any type that land produced. Very useful. And last on our enchantment list is going to be Cryptolith Rite. Uh, creatures you have control, tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So basically, you're using your creatures as a mana ramp with this card. So if you don't have a, um, a mana weft or a gem hideout, at least you have a third option to start tapping slivers for, for mana if you don't have it. Uh, next, we're going to go ahead and hit up this one, Walking Atlas. Uh, you tap it, you may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield. Uh, gotta have this one, Door of Destinies. I assume you're going to choose Slivers. Just, just saying. That's what it says. Uh, whenever you play a spell of that type, put a charge counter on it. Creatures you control of that type get plus one, plus one for each charge counter on Door of Destiny. So it's automatically plussing up your, your Slivers. And last but not least, a favorite. Did you see any Planeswalkers in here? No, there weren't any. Because I wanted to go straight, just all old school. They're before Planeswalkers. Just, just like it used to be back in, you know, like in the 90s. Eh, I would say maybe like the 2000s, like 2004 or whatever. The pre-Planeswalker era. So I decided I would throw in uh, a big favorite of mine. Immortal Sun. Obviously, you can see what it does. It shuts down Planeswalkers. At the beginning of your draw step, you get to draw an additional card. So you have double card draw. It's basically giving you um, Howling Mind, but just for you, not for everybody, which is amazing. Spells you cost, cast one less to cast, and creatures get plus one. It's so good. It's just a broken card. Um, now, we're going to hit some of these rocks. Um, a lot of the stuff I would expect that you'd be pretty well aware of if you play Commander. We've got an Arcane Signet. You can see why it's in there. It gives you, um, you know, mana of any color. Commander Sphere. It gives you the mana, plus it can give you a card draw if you need it. Soul Ring. We know what it does. Worn Power Stone. Uh, Dark Seal Ingot is indestructible, and again, it gives you any color mana. Uh, Gilded Lotus. Um, three mana of any color. Very useful. And last but not least, a Chromatic Lantern. A must-have in this deck. Um, lands you control have tap, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Because again, they're all so many different color slivers. you got to be f five colors as much as you can with this stuff. Now, last, we're going to do the non... Uh, these are all non-basics. So, you know, to play this deck, you're going to need to run a lot of multicolor lands or, you know, five-color available lands. So, let's kind of dive into some of these and take a look. Um, so, we got Hallowed Fountain. Um, obviously, it's a, a shock land. You can either play it tapped or play it untapped and take two damage. Uh, we got Wooded Foothills, a fetch land. Allows you to go look for a forest and a mountain. Uh, we're going to look at Dark Slick Shores, probably one of the weakest ones I've gotten here, but I need a little bit of a black source, and I did not have a, um, I think it's called, what is it, Morphic Pool or something, so the one card that, um, that came in Battle Bond that's like black and black and blue, I used them all in a different deck. Uh, next we're going to have um, Rupture Spire, uh, when it, enters, it does enter Taps, which I don't like, but it is a, a five color land, when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice unless you play one, uh, add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So eventually you get the mana. It's very useful. Shimmering Grotto. Um, you pay a one colorless or any color mana, basically. And then you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. So good way to convert that to something useful. Uh, Cascading Cataracts. Uh, you pay to tap it, but if it's an indestructible land. Um, you add five mana to in any combination of colors to your mana pool. So very useful. Uh, but of course, I guess it's a filter. So you put whatever five you have, and then it gives you whatever five you want. So you take, let's say you have the wrong color and you're missing white or blue or something. You can take five of something else and then convert it into something that gives you the right colors. Uh, next, we got Survivor's Encampment. Um, tap and untap creature you control. Add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Again, another way to um, get. Uh, five colors off of your creatures, just kind of like the um, Cryptolith Rite and the Gem Hide Sliver. It's, but that one's on a land, so it's very useful. Uh, Lotus Petal, uh, Lotus Field, excuse me. Uh, Hexproof, uh, it enters a battlefield tapped. When it enters a battlefield, you have to sacrifice two lands. But so what? You're going to get three mana of any color when you tap the one land. So that's going to get really useful uh, next turn after it comes out. Uh, Katria 
triome. Now this can be fetched. Um, so there's a couple of fetch lands in here. This can, you can go fetch this because it's a forest island mountain. So if you can go fetch a mountain, you can go get this. So that's very useful. Um, Indantha triome. Uh, again, just plain swamp forest. It's these tri lands are very useful in this deck. Swamp forest island. And here we got Island Mountain Plains. So again, these are all going to be super useful to get the color of mana that you need. Only drawback is they do come into play tap, but you know what? It does get you the mana you need. So it's in a deck like this, you want to try to get as many colored mana sources as you can. Uh, Rejuvenating Springs. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped unless you have two or more opponents, which you will. You're playing commander. Uh, next we got Arcane Sanctum. It comes into play tapped. I mean, I'll tell you what, I'll, I will correct myself. There are occasions where you might play a two-player commander game, but it's not the preferred way to play. Most players that do play commander, they're going to be playing against, you know, four or more opponents. Usually four is about standard. Um, Jungle Shrine, it is a, um, a tri-land, but again, this card, um, the disadvantage with these, and I wish I had all of the um, triomes, the disadvantage here is it's only land, so I can't go fetch this. I just have to play it, and that's it. But I can't get a fetch land and go get it. Um, Sliver Hive, you got to have it in there. You obviously add one mana of any color to your mana pool. You spend the mana only to cast a Sliver spell. Um, you can pay five to put a 1-1 one, 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 one colorless Sliver creature token to the battlefield. Um, you know, I, I don't think you're going to probably use it that much for that, but more than likely the, the tap and, and give you mana. Um, obviously, with this land, you can see what it does. You're going to play creature spells, but you're going to play slippers, so that's the way to go. City of Brass. Very old reprint from um, Arabian Nights. It, you can tap it to get any color mana, but it does one damage to you. Uh, next, we got Fable Passage. Um, search your library for a basic land card, put it in the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. If you control four or more lands, on top that land. It can be very useful. Cavern of Souls, got to have it in there. They're all slivers. You're going to choose slivers, and it also gives you the color mana you need for slit to cast some slivers. So, very helpful. And they can't be countered. That's what's really great about Cavern of Souls. That's why it's an $80 card. That's why people are willing to spend that kind of money on it. Um, next, we got Prismatic Vista. You can pay a life and then sacrifice for Prismatic Vista and search your library for basic. Next we got is Exotic Orchard. Add one mana of any color to, of that land uh, an opponent could, controls could produce. So you tap it, um, of course, uh, in whatever your opponents are playing. You're probably going to have opponents playing at least one of the colors you need. And last but not least, this little guy. Actually, no, I'm sorry. There's four more. Couldn't fit them all in the row. There was so many of these. Um, so Rootbound Crag enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain or a forest. And just the last four is these. Um, you know, I kind of forgot about this card. Uh, I kind of discovered it when I was looking at some cards in my binder. And I was like, why am I not using this in like three different decks? Um, you can add one mana of any color to your mana pool. Spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So again, creature affinity, um, tribal affinity card, really useful. They're only like, on TCG Player, I looked these up, they're only like two or three bucks. So very useful. Uh, next, we got Path of Ancestry. Uh, add one mana of any color to your, mana, your commander's identity. When the mana is spent to cast a creature spell, that creature that shares a creature type with the commander, you can scry one. So the, the commander is every creature type, so it is a sliver. So it's good. Um, of course, Command Tower, I think you know what it does. Um, we got Holdout Settlement. Tap and untap creature. You control, add one mana of any color to your mana. Well, again, another source to generate five color mana. And, of course, and mind you, of course, this is a, when you don't have your commander out. So once you go ahead and get your commander out, then you won't really necessarily need to worry about stuff like this. But it is helpful to have it. Um, all right, guys, that concludes the sliver deck. Uh, that's our commander, Morphon. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. Uh, I enjoyed a lot making slivers. I've, I've used to have a um, modern sliver deck. Um, a long time ago, and it had the two Sliver Queens and some other stuff in there, but obviously I play more Commander now than Modern, so, you know, by all means, I decided I would go ahead and convert all my old decks into Commander decks. 
Um, I really hope you guys enjoy these decks. Um, thanks for leaving comments for me. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any uh, comments you'd like to make about it, by all means, uh, this is one of my favorite tribes. And, you know, I, hope, I know that a lot of Magic players know about slivers and try to make good sliver decks. So hopefully for newer players, this kind of video is helpful in seeing how the synergy of slivers works. But, uh, you know, it's good uh, making these for you guys, and I will see you very soon. Bye.